For practice it, self-check 5.28 assertion 2. We are given the following code and we need to fill in the box with the correct output or how many times it will output, being always true, never true, or sometimes true. The first thing we're gonna look at is this column. We're gonna go column by column and then we are just going to look at the rows in every single column. So when we first look at our code, we have a method that takes an integer as a parameter. Inside of our method, we have a random um, class, or and we're using the, um, the yeah we're using the random class, and we're making a new instance of random with r. And in here, we're sending the integer a equal to r dot next int three plus one. What this line of code means is that we are starting our random number at one and it's gonna go three more times so it's gonna go to four but not touch four so it can be numbers one through three we also have int b is equal to two so we have a and b we have a while loop here we have our first point a and then we have a point b once we hit our while loop in our while loop we have um, we're going to run this as long as n is greater than b, so as long as our parameter passed in is greater than 2. Next, we are going to assign b equal to b plus a, the number um, in here. This could be rewritten as b is equal, or b plus equals a. And then after that, we have an if statement where if a is greater than 1, n minus minus, and then... Um, this gives us, or this takes our n, and then it subtracts 1 from it, and then we have point C, and point C is still going to be in our if statement, and we are setting A equal to a new random int number. The random int number is going to be um, from 1 to whatever B is at the time. Then we have an else statement, where else is equal to A. Um, or inside of our else statement we have a is equal to b plus 1 and then we have our next point d and then we have the end of our while loop right here and then we're just going to return in here but before we do we have a point e so now that we know our method we can start looking at these parts so we are asked is n greater than b at point a well we don't know this n can be any number so n can be either greater than 2 or less than 2. So this is sometimes true. At point b, is n greater than b? Yes, it always has to be true, because this condition right here, for it to be in the while loop, it must be greater than b. At point c, we're going to look here, is n greater than b? Well, this is sometimes true. And the reason why it goes from always true to sometimes true is because we are manipulating n here and we are manipulating b here. So this could change whether b is greater than n or n is greater than b. At point d, we are, we well, we skip this if statement. However, we still manipulated b up here. And since we manipulated b, this could change to be bigger than n, which means that this is sometimes um, bigger than or b is sometimes bigger than n because of this line of code right here not from this else statement and then lastly we have point e where um, we need to return n and this will be never because if n is greater than b we're going to be in this while loop the only way to not be in this while loop is if b is greater than n so once we hit here n can never be greater than b and that is the first column next we have a is greater than 1 so we're going to look at point a and the first thing that we're going to look at is our a integer because this is the only thing that messes with a so we said earlier that a is from 1 to 3 well if this was a is greater than or equal to 1 this would be always true however a can equal 1 and since a always has to be greater than 1, this will be sometimes true. At point b, 
we look in here, we haven't manipulated A at all, so it's still going to be sometimes true. Now at point C, our A has to be greater than 1 right here. So since we have this if statement, that means everything inside of here will only execute if A is greater than 1. That means this holds true always. Next, we are in our else statement. And the only way our else statement will execute is um, if A is not greater than 1. So we're going into this as A is not greater than 1. However, we in our else statement manipulate A before our point D. And we're set A to equal to B plus 1. So that means B being 2 and then being added up here has to be some number greater than 2. So B is definitely going to be greater than 2. And we're adding 1 to it, which means A is definitely going to be greater than 1. So this will always be true as well. At point E, um, if we went through this while loop, it would always be true. However, if we never went into this while loop, and we only use this part of the code, then A could equal 1. So it's sometimes true, just like in point A. Lastly, for B is greater than A, we're going to look at our code. And at point A, this can be sometimes true because B is 2, A could be 3, or it could be 1. So that's why it's sometimes. At point B, we are manipulating B. So it can be greater than A. However, if B is 2 and A is equal to 1, this will be 3. And 3, we don't know. Oh, cut that out. So now we're in part B, point B. We haven't manipulated A or B yet, so this is going to be the same thing as point A, where it's sometimes. If it was after here, we might have to change this to be always, but since it's before, it's going to be sometimes. Next, we're going to look at point C, which is inner if statement, where A has to be greater than 1. And this is after we, we manipulate our B. And like we said, if we manipulate our B to equal to B plus A, that means this is definitely be, going to be greater than A, because it's set equal to A plus something else. And this something else is 2. So what we're going to be doing is saying that C is always true because of this line. Next, we have point D. So we're not going to look in our if statement. We're only going to look into our else statement. And this is after A is equal to B plus 1. Well, since B um, is equal to B plus A right here, that means B is going to be big. But in here, we're saying basically A is equal to B plus 1. So A is 1 more than B. That means A is going to be greater than B. So this will never be true for point D. Lastly, for point E, since A is between 1 and 3, and B is equal to 2, that means this can either return a 1 or a 4 for A, meaning that at point E, A can be bigger than B, but also B can be bigger than A, which is why it's sometimes true. If we submit those, those are the pass for all the tests and this is the answer for this code.